just refreshing the crappy Twitch app on my phone just to make sure. Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to assume we're live. OBS is saying we're live and I can usually trust it. Live. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to the Storytime Network. Today, once more, is the Paradox Hour podcast. Continuing our Pride Month lineup, we are talking about the gay romance series Given... And here today, it is a smaller cast than usual. It is I, your sleep-deprived Brit Mill, and uh, I'm assuming also sleep-deprived Jack. Yep, not as bad as uh, I was yesterday, but still pretty sleep-deprived. I've been taking naps each each day, only about half an hour, but uh, yeah, I've been taking naps. Uh in fairness, it probably doesn't help myself that I uh, tend to... I like switching position during the day, so I'll usually lie down on my bed, uh, and then I fall asleep in bed. Uh, while, Whoops, easy. while, you know, reading or something like that. Uh, but hey, it's fine. As long as I do it early enough, it doesn't actually disturb my sleep schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. I just have to make sure it's early enough. <laughs> anyway, given... Uh, this is, so I'm just trying to think. I definitely watched this, um, immediately as it was airing, because I believe back in the old FMK days, this was one of the premieres I was given. And I was really nervous about it, because based on the PVs, I was worried, just by the way that, uh, when Oyama boy on far left and Haruki and Akihiko, boys on the right, looked. Uh, and the way Mafia looks, uh, boy on middle left. Uh, I was really worried that it would be, you know, like one of those negative gay romance shows that Japan does love to sh shove out. Uh, and that c couldn't mm -hmm. be further from the truth. All four of these boys are complete dumbasses. Complete and utter yep. dumbasses. And I love them for it. Um, what about you, Jack? Because I can't remember if you started watching it immediately after we did that preview stream. Not preview, premiere stream. I don't know if it was immediately, but it was... I started at some point during that season, and mm. I caught up. Uh, I think it was like... Oh, I season. remember what it was. Um, I believe it was because Bem didn't air for a couple of weeks because of the Kyoani fire. And so on the FMK yeah. streams, one week we did um, Grand Belm, and one week we did Given, and so you had to watch that to catch up. Yeah, I caught I up, remember and then I was now. like, shit, I like this show. I'm yeah, gonna watch holy Rick. shit, it's, this show is actually really fucking good. I'm still disappointed that didn't get on FMK that season. Because it's so yeah, fucking I'm good. I'm just that of this store uh, Grand Belm got on, because they were underrated, I think, both of them. I, uh... I cannot speak to Grand Belm. Uh, I watched three episodes. I think three episodes of it or something like that. Certainly certainly not many episodes and uh, was not Well, my God, it just isn't your thing, though. It's a surprise I've enjoyed Dan Arsene on that much. But that's that's for the uh, that's for the finale stream in a couple of weeks. So, given, um, it's basically the story of two romances, I would say. So the um, it's, it's for gay, uh, it's for um, queer men in a band, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Two of them are in college. Two of them are in high school. Yeah, but for the time being, it certainly split into two two main story arcs. Uh, the first being the romance between Ueno Yama and uh, Matthew, the boys on the left, and then the second being the romance between uh, Akihiko and uh, Haruki. Uh, so the actual the actual anime series covered the first arc, and then the film covered the second arc. Uh, the film, thankfully, well, the, the second arc did build up through the. Uh, I mean, anime, yes, just, it was it took extra stage in the movie. It was definitely you know, it's not like the uh, whole romance between Akihiko and uh, Haruki came out of nowhere. It was very yeah, very no. evident that certainly Haruki uh, was totally in love with Akihiko. Uh, unfortunately, the it doesn't... Uh, the love isn't returned until 
partway through the, well, pretty much to the end of the movie. Uh, I do have the spoiler warning we'll up, I should point out. But, uh, we will discuss the movie a bit later, because I kind of want to focus on the series first. Yes, because, look, I do did enjoy the movie, but at the end of the day, it was an hour long, and uh, it probably could have done with more time. But And the series is just really fucking good. The series, I mean, uh, oh, give me a second. Let me just check. Where exactly did I rank it in 2019? I believe it was fourth. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in your top five. It was definitely in my top five. Yeah, it was fourth just above uh, Bocce, but below Run With The Wind, Mob Psycho, and My Hero Season 4. Uh, I mean, I'm not surprised that any of those are in your top five. I mean, it's... They're all good shows. In hindsight, Very I wouldn't have ranked uh, My Hero just because it's not fair to any of the other shows on the list because it's always going to be in first, uh, which is what well, I ended up doing in 2020. The thing is, it's unfair to rank sequels in general. Yeah. Um, which, again, then isn't very fair for any of the other shows because my second was Mob Psycho Season 2. So really... Uh, I mean, that was, that was my anime of the year for 2019, so... <laughs> not counting sequels, Given was second. Which I think says says a lot. Because um, mm-hmm. Summer, I believe, was a really good season as well. I believe I've still got my Summer ranking. I think that was the one of the few that I did actually do a write-up for. If I can just find it quickly. Where is it? I have to go Summer through... 2019 had Dr. Stone... Fire Force, Vinland Saga, Given, uh, Dumbbells, Maidens, uh, so Astra. It had, it had Given, it had Mix Core 1, Dr. Stone, uh, was it Dr. Stone Core 2? No, no it was Core the first one. Core Dr. Damn, Stone. Core 1. Uh, Fruits Basket, yeah. uh, Core 2, Demon Slayer, Core mm-hmm. 2, Fire Force, Vinland Saga, Bem, which was actually pretty good. Uh, Ones Within, Young Nobunaga, Dumbbells, Oh Maidens, Oh uh, Maidens. Randall, Bem, Symphogear, final season of Symphogear, which yeah. was uh, fucking amazing. So. Oh, and the show that you have dubbed the most average show you've ever watched, <laughs> City Abandoned Sacred Beast. Oh, Sacred Beast, it is genuinely the most average show I've ever watched. <laughs> it is still the most <laughs> average show I've ever watched. Admittedly, shows like, um, oh, what was it? There was another, it was a really average show in 2020. I know we're getting off topic, but I do want to mention this show. Which show was it that was super fucking average? Uh, I don't fucking know. Where is it? Where is it? It's not Irinosaur, it's not Iwakakaru. Oh, it's fucking Ikebukuro Westgate Park. That was fucking Bye. average as hell. That was so fucking average. It was so bland, I dropped it after like two episodes. It's such a fucking mid-show, I can't believe I fucking finished it. <laughs> I have watched worse shows and finished worse shows, but I enjoyed them more. Tower of God was also another very average show for me. But uh, again, that's that's getting off topic. We discussed those shows a little bit in the 2020 roundup for anime um, in Jan in December or January, one of the two. But given, I think it was end of December. Yeah. So the first thing to know, sure we did it New Year's Eve. Very possible. Uh, the first thing to note about given only eleven episodes, only eleven yeah, episodes. One of, sh- one of the shorter runs a show can have during a season. Um, and yet, you know, it, it didn't feel too short and it didn't feel like it was sort of padding for time at any point. It was all, it was very tightly paced. It helps a lot that the climax of the series of the, uh, of the show is, I think, episode nine. Episode nine. So it has a couple couple episodes of, uh, Denamans. Fuyu no Hanashi. Or... In English, a winter story, which is here's the other interesting thing about Given: all the episode titles uh, names of songs. Yeah, episodes one to Honestly, eight, and then ten and eleven are songs from uh, alternative rock bands. Uh, so, episode one is Libertines. Episode two, 
Bing Crosby, episode three, the 1975, four arc month keys, five Huber stank, uh, six <laughs> Radiohead, seven Rolling Stones, eight Muse, 10 Oasis, and 11 Blur. Uh, anyway, here's Wonderwall. Wonderwall was in fact the, the name of episode 10, um, which was great. Uh, and episode nine is actually the name of the uh, the song that uh, the band sings in that episode. So, as I said, it's in English. It's a wind story, but the uh, the Japanese name is Fuyu no Hanashi, and it is a Honestly, fucking great song. The episode in general is one of my absolute favorites of that season. Uh, mm. Not that season, that year. Mm. Like. There were a lot of good episodes that of anime that came out that year, but episode nine of Given is one of my favorites. I should also point. It, can I? Can I just? I've just remembered this. I'm fairly sure it was Jerry. It was an episode nines. It was either in episode nines or episode uh, somewhere in the back half. Somewhere in the back half's comments on Crunchyroll, somebody had clearly either was trying to troll or had actually gotten that far into the anime and was like wait a minute, this is gay? <laughs> it's just like, oh my god, how, how, how much clearer do you want it to be? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this anime is so we... gay. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of the gayest anime I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> like, good for it. No, good no, this absolutely. This is unrepentantly gay. Ueno Yama and Mafu are are gay. I believe Akihiko and Haruki are bisexual. Certainly Akihiko is flamboyantly yeah. bisexual. Especially oh, you yeah. know, in the movie. Uh, did not expect that scene in the movie. We'll get to it, but I did not expect it. Oh yeah, that scene. <laughs> but basically, it's uh, Ueno Yama, Haruki and Akihiko are, are in a basically instrumental band together. Uh, when Oyama is a high schooler, whereas Haruki and Akiko, I believe, are in college or university or whatever you want to They're, call it. They are both in, yeah. Yeah, that's the... Higher there. education. Higher education. Uh, and one day, when Oyama is going to his nap spot, when he finds uh, Mafuyu Sato sat there with a guitar, s snoozing, basically. And thus begins the... Uh, hilarious courtship between the two of them. Because, here's the thing, Matthew knows he's gay. Very clear he's gay. He had a, he had a, he had a boyfriend. Uh, Ueno Yama did not realise that. Uh, until he started hanging out with Matthew. And his gay panic is genuinely one of the best things I've ever seen. It's so hilarious. It's so fucking funny watching this, this guy just not understand what the hell is happening uh, and have to be helped through it by uh, the other band members. Um, I do have some screenshots of this because there are, this anime is so fucking funny. We've been mentioning it all throughout so far, but it is so funny and it has some absolutely incredible shots. The first one is sort of endemic of Ueno Yama's gay panic of, oh God, <laughs> this fucking idiot. <laughs> Oh, God. I love him. I they're, love these dorks. They're so fucking, so fucking dumb, and I love them. Um, yeah, I mean, that is the thing. Like, uh, Mafia starts hanging around with Wenoyama basically because Wenoyama uh, helps change the strings on Mafia's guitar, and Mafia basically starts following him around like a like a lost puppy. Um, and I believe first or second episode, um, and again, I've, I've watched this scene so much on YouTube since, especially in the past sort of couple of months, this, I've just realized how good of a song it is. Um, Mafia asks Wenoyama and the rest of the band to play something cool, and Wenoyama's basic... He doesn't actually say it, but his thought process is, 
huh, I don't want this, this guy hanging around, so to get rid of him, I'm going to play with more passion than I have in the last uh, few years. And just totally gets into it. And another hilarious scene is uh, Haruki and uh, Akihiko realising this and uh, going, holy shit, he's actually really into this. Haruki starts playing and starts humming along to it and then suddenly just looks at Akihiko just like, dum, 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 Akihiko, you better start fucking playing soon. It's just, oh. I can't, I honestly can't understate how, how funny this anime is. I got so much joy and entertainment out of this out of this series, summer twenty nineteen. Honestly, um, it's genuinely one of my favorites. I mm. think I, I think, I gave this one like a nine out of ten because one of the best ser- sh- series of the year mm. of that year. Um. Yeah, I should mention that all of the. Well, all of the band songs are are real and are played by, I believe, the band uh, Sentimillimental. Um, That's a mouthful. Yes, it is. Let's see if I can find the. Where is it? Uh, yeah, um, the opening theme, the closing theme, and the original songs, the the jam session. And Fuyu no Hanashi, composed and performed by Sentimentalmental, um, and the ending theme, Marutsuke and uh, Fuyu no Hanashi, are sung by Mafu's uh, voice actor, Shogo Yano. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean it's Sentimentalmental is a really, really good band, and they're starting to get more more um anime openings and eds which i'm really glad about um because they are really really good um i believe they got one this season what was it? oh it was backflips op that's what they got they are they do backflips op this season um yeah i mean it basically the show basically progresses um when uh when Oyama hears Mafu singing, and uh, let's be real, when Oyama's heart skips a beat again, I don't, I don't think yeah. there's any like um, <laughs> any <laughs> contestation about that fact. Um, and the hilarious thing is, is that when Oyama then asks Mafu to join the band, Mafu declines and then doesn't turn up to the practice session when he'd been turning up to all the others. And it's another absolutely hilarious scene because when Oyama is clearly so pissed off and then fucking, <laughs> uh, fucking Haruki and Akigo are just pissing themselves laughing about it. They can just tack the radiating salt off of him and they are just having a field day with it and it's yeah. great. And then, and then it gets even better because Haruki then re- reveals that um, the reason Mafia's not there is because he's got a job interview. Um, and and then, like, Haruki's like, wait, you don't have Mafia's number? And I do? And just, like, there's just this instant of, <laughs> what? <laughs> and he and Oyama just turns to look at Akihiko just like, I don't have it either, don't look at me! <laughs> and it's just... Oh, uh, Arky is just such a social butterfly. Yeah, it's it's an, it's one of those series that also like isn't afraid to go simplistic with its um with its art for comedic effect, um and it and it's yeah. just so fucking great when it's done. I do have another one, but I want to do have another one that shows that. But I want to wait to uh, to reveal it until we get to that point in the story. Matthew does eventually join the band. Um. I believe the reason it's been a while actually since I've watched the entire series. I believe the reason he gives is that um, he wanted to get a job first because um, the other band members made clear that that's that's an important part of being a musician is having having an extra source of income, basically. Uh, and then from there on, it really is just. Uh, Wenoyama and Mafu growing closer while... Because here's the thing. Mafu is very... 
very introverted um, and is very much struggling throughout pretty much the entire series up until episode 9 with the death of his um, of his boyfriend basically uh, Yuki I believe yeah um, yeah, and the performance in episode nine is what ultimately brings him catharsis. It's basically it's it's you know it's a goodbye, uh, mm -hmm. it's a goodbye to Yuki, and it's and as I said, it's it's the catharsis that um, Mafia needed to get past the because uh, we learn we learn later on that Yuki actually committed suicide, and it's himself. Which, um, I was not expecting for, um, them to actually show, um, part of the body, too. Mm. Well, it's, obviously, we, d there is, th certainly, we don't hear about any note, um, well, it's, it's implied that it's not necessarily, um, or it wasn't necessarily, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, on purpose, but more a... Because it's, um, I believe he dies of alcohol poisoning, basically. Um, oh? Huh. I believe so, because I, I, I certainly remember um, on that shot of his body, there being a bunch of uh, cans of booze around. Ah. Uh. Let me just check the character's list. Where's Yuki? Because I was Yuki? pretty sure he, he hung himself. You'd be wrong, though. Uh, I remember. Um, I think it was something about. Mafia oh, drink Yuki heavily and up. hang himself. Okay, yeah. Okay. Because they they had had a huge fight right before that. I yeah, believe. and base basically that was a trigger. Basically, um, Mafia feels like he's to blame for it. Basically. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, and it, it really is just, um, I mean, that is, that is the final piece of, uh, the catharsis that Mafia needs, but throughout pretty much the entire show, he is, you know, he is getting past it and it, it and it is helped by, um, uh, his, his former, relationship with, uh, well, his, his relationship with Ueno Yama, but also his, um, talks with, oh, what was his name? Um, his old Hiragi. Friends. I don't remember exactly. Hiragi, right, I believe, that's... I believe was the one in particular. Uh, there was also uh, Yagi, but I don't believe he actually talked to uh, to Mafiu about it. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's that performance really is just just stupendous. It is a beautiful performance. My yeah. God. I mean, the amount of times I've I've watched the performance of that song really is uh, certainly well into double figures um, because it really is. I c look, we can't play the song um, because that will get us copyright struck. Um, let's see if I can YouTube. I'm going to get a link to it and post it in the chat. Because um, it really does bear watching. Uh, mm. Mafu song. There. Uh, copy link address and post. There we go. So yeah, give that a watch at some point because it really. I mean, the song itself. Again, the song itself is great, but it's the performance that really, and it's. I know the bit that got a lot of people, and it was something that got me as well, was throughout the second verse, Matthew is basically saying goodbye, um, mentally, and he ends yeah. the, he ends the monologue, and it's. And you get to see actually, uh, basically, um, a, I don't want to say a movie, but like a run of uh, memories from their relationship because it's it started out as the they were basically childhood friends who 
um, were similarly, I believe they are referred to as, um, what is it, uh, latchkey kids. Kids who return mm. to an empty home um, after school. And the last, the last line in that monologue is just, and all credit to, to Shogo Yano for this, for this delivery is just a simple, I miss you. And the emotion it's delivered with is just heartbreaking. It's utterly, utterly one hell heartbreaking. Of a... Both the song and the overall, v... the VA's overall performance are just phenomenal, mm. especially in that episode. Yeah. Um, and but while that is that is very much the climax of Mafia's catharsis, it's not the end of the show because then we get to because uh, oh god, after the fucking song, obviously Mafia is is just utterly heartbroken because um, he's he's finally basically letting out his feelings because that that was another big thing throughout the uh, run of the show thus far was Matthew basically saying how can I be a how can I be a, a singer in a band how can I write a song when I feel like I can't emote I can't you know share my feelings I can't uh, show my feelings to other people um, and the, again the song really does just break the barriers and he he walks off basically in tears when Oyama follows him Leading Haruki hilariously having to basically stall for time. Um, oh my god. He basically says, uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. Usually we're in, in an instrumental band, but that's our first song with lyrics. Uh, it was written by... Well, he kind of just walked off the stage. Um, <laughs> but it was also composed by... He also walked off the stage. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile... Poor Haruki. Yeah, poor Haruki. <laughs> Meanwhile, Oeno Yama just fucking s smacks one on Mafuyu, fucking kisses him, says he's so proud, and then goes back out. The hilarious thing is, the next episode starts with the Oeno Yama arriving home and then suddenly realizing, wait a minute, did I just kiss Mafuyu? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, so he ends up having an existential crisis about it. It's like, Oh god, I the show was so intense. I I forgot a large chunk of it. He fucking rewinds his mind to it, and it's just <laughs> it's like, wait, how does how does Mafia feel about me? Oh god. <laughs> and then, oh god, Mafia ends up basically uh, getting sick, basically as a result of the stress of the situation. I think. Um, and Most Ueno, likely, yeah. Ueno Yama goes to visit him, and he's fucking stood outside for a while, just going, Sh should I do this? Uh, oh, God. And eventually he goes, Ueno Yama basically decides, whatever, if I'm going to die, might as well go young. <laughs> then knocks on the door, Mafia opens it, like, heavily flushed, and hair all, all tousled and ruffled, and fucking Ueno Yama... They had, like, a fucking explosion effect on it. It was like, oh, God. And it's just, oh. Don't Yama's... forget the scene where where his inner monologue is like, oh, well, he likes me back. It's mutual. Oh, no, I was getting to that. Because they take a trip to a beach. And it's revealed at the end of that same episode, I believe, that it's, um, it's where Mafia and Yuki went for a date once. Um, mm. and Matthew confesses and and just like he goes when I am a coon I, lo I love you and when I was like huh huh oh no it's even better because Matthew goes <laughs> this is a this 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 is a great spot for a date isn't it and when I was when I was like wait what <laughs> What are you saying? And then he says, I love you. The next episode starts with, uh, do, do you mean that in a normal kind of way? No, I mean that in a romantic kind of way. And then he does just zoom out and just like, 
the, <laughs> the kanji for love just pops up and moves across the horizon over Earth. It ends up in a fucking, like, prehistoric scene as um, another set of characters for love uh, comes across and they clash and become a rainbow it's mutual and just results in this shot which again is just so fucking hilarious I'm just when I'm just like <laughs> what <laughs> but it gets better it gets even fucking better because it then fucking goes <laughs> into Oyama's psyche with all and Oenoyama Ritsuka farewell party to Virgin Oenoyama. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, and they just so many of them are just panicking, and then finally one of them points out that uh, about six months prior, um, Haruki Akihiko and Oenoyama had been discussing um, a band where two of the members had gotten together, and it resulted in the uh, one of the band members basically being kicked out because of it, because of the social issues that resulted. And Oenoyama outright says, who the hell would date a fellow band member? Seriously, drop dead. I would never be caught doing something like that. And suddenly every, every one of them just goes, oh no. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just the it's just the look on his face as he's saying seriously drop dead and it's just like oh my god your irony is yeah. hilarious it's just so fucking fantastic oh my god oh and eventually like um, the two of them go to Haruki to basically ask his permission to date um, and he gives it but then there's another scene I believe it's again I'm fairly sure it's in episode um, 11 again this is just so fucking hilarious where they um, where they have a photo shoot <laughs> and <laughs> when they're trying to take the photo they're all struggling not to just completely piss themselves laughing to the point where the photographer, a friend of Haruki's, uh, basically institutes a 500 yen fee for each ta each time they laugh. And, <laughs> and Akiko is just like, please don't. The more you tell us we can't laugh, the more I want to burst out laughing. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Uh. Eventually they do, and it, you know it ends with them with them together, and it's and it's glorious. Um, there's also a hilarious conversation we haven't mentioned between Oedoyama and Akihiko. Um, well, it's Which one? It's hilarious and heartwarming. The one where they get a drink afterwards, and uh, Akihiko ah. is just like, uh, "Did something happen between you and Matthew?" Nah, I'm kidding. Then looks at Wedoyama, whose face basically screams, I'm in love with Mafia. <laughs> and then Aki goes, just, just turns away and goes, Oh shit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Akihiko is stunningly oblivious to a lot of things. And then, uh, then just like, he, he points out the face to, to, to Wedoyama, just like, Wait, what did I look like? That say it's screaming you're in love with Matthew and fucking where the Yava just collapses. <laughs> but it's also a really heartwarming conversation because again, as much as we as much as we do find Oenoyama's gay panic hilarious, um he is still a teenage boy in Japan figuring out his sexuality and figuring out that it is not he is not heterosexual. And actually <laughs> asks Akihiko, you know, is there something wrong with him? And Akihiko, you know, very, very out bisexual, just says, no, I'm, you know, I'm bisexual. Do you find me weird? No, of course not. There's nothing wrong with you. Like, it's, it's a really touching scene. And again, it's, it's made all the more touching because of the state of um, LGBT. Q plus uh, rights in Japan. They are steadily getting better, but they are still nowhere near, you 
you know. I think they are either on track to or recently legalized gay marriage in Japan. I don't remember. I read a I read a thread from somebody that said that's actually not that's actually not great. Um, or what, really? what they're doing with it is not great. I can't remember exactly the specifics, but apparently that particular law is not um, as much as it does uh, make legalize gay marriage uh, technically. It's apparently still not great for gay rights. Again, I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was from a. Uh, it was certainly retweeted by a source that I that I trust, um, by a I believe an American journalist who lives in uh, Japan. Actually, I believe the first time I came across them was I read uh, a book they wrote about the um, the 2011 earthquake and tsunami, which was very fascinating. Um, but to give you an idea, um, it is apparently the first um, the first boy boys love series to air on the uh, on Fuji TV's um, anime block. Oh, hot damn! Um, For those who, of you who don't know, Fuji TV's animation block is kind of a big fucking deal. Mm. Uh, Noe Tamina. I'm probably fucking up the pronunci pronunciation, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so... That... I mean, Given is a big deal. It is a very popular series, and for good, for good reason. Um, but also the fact that, um, again, this is... Looking at the comments for YouTube videos and for the episodes... People who've read the manga were outright like, outright like, "Oh, this this anime adaptation is fucking incredible. I love this so much." Especially, especially the fucking um, the fucking it's mutual scene, and then the the farewell party. A lot of people were went on record saying, "No, this is this is perfect. This is exactly how it should be." Um, and I have actually read part of the manga forgiven i believe i'm two volumes in and i've just gotten to the uh the first performance um and it is it is still a fantastic series um again it loses something because obviously it's a static series and there's no music but uh i did actually make sure that when i was reading um the performance I did have uh, the song playing in the background, just to add that you know, little bit of, mm. little bit of sensory whatever to it. Um, so that's that's the that's the anime that that as we said that aired in summer twenty nineteen. Um, the movie, um, I believe it released in Japan in August twenty twenty. But it didn't appear on Crunchyroll until ooh, when was it? Earlier this year, um, I believe it was like February, was March, Feb February twenty twenty one. February twenty twenty one. Who said yeah. it? It covered the uh, the re relationship between Haruki and Akihiko. Um, the issue is. Akihiko's romantic life is severely fucked up. Like, horrendously oh, so. Oh, yeah. Because he is living with his um, ex-boyfriend, uh, Ugetsu, who, um, when they first met, actually basically destroyed Akihiko's passion for, at the very least, playing the violin, if not music altogether. Um... And they... He didn't do it intentionally. No, he, ju he did no. it just by being talented. And Akihiko yeah, basically I... deciding that, no, there's no way I'm going to be able to get that good, so what's the point? Um, the, the prodigy problem, everybody. Mm. Um, and it... And basically... They, they are not suited to each other, and basically their relationship is very much a... I don't want to say a hate fucking relationship, but it kind of is. 
it, there's a, a toxicity and belligerence in that relationship. It's a it's an incredibly toxic uh, relationship. Um, and eventually, which gets... unfortunately winds up leading into another relationship that uh, Akihiko gets into. Well, it's they basically. Um... Again, I'm trying to remember. I watched the movie once, and that was back in February. Whereas you watched, I believe, yesterday. E two days ago. Two days ago. Either way, a lot, a lot sooner than I'd, or a lot, uh, whatever. Um, basically, more recently, yes. yeah, more recently. That's the word I was looking for. I, my brain isn't wholly on board um, with the words I say sometimes. Um, I am with you there, my friend. <laughs> it's amazing that we some we somehow have a podcast, despite that fact. <laughs> mm. Um, but basically, um, I can't remember if Akihiko just leaves or gets kicked out of the apartment. Uh, he and Ugetsu share because that's the other thing. Like they are they are technically exes, but they're still living together. Mm -hmm. um, and they still have sex on occasion. And again, it's horrifically toxic, and uh, it eventually results in probably, not even probably, easily the most uncomfortable scene in the entire series. In the... Yeah. Uh, Haruki does not consent to the uh, awkward and horrific sexual encounter that Akihiko wants to have. It does get stopped yeah. before anything really happens, but it is still incredibly, incredibly uncomfortable. Um, yeah, the only thing really saving the whole situation is that Akihiko stops before it gets too far and realizes mm. that he fucked up. Yeah. He absolutely does realize it. And it's and it is basically sort of the start of Akihiko realizing that the situation is not tenable and needs to change. Um, mm -hmm. And in fairness, <laughs> Haruki does as well and realizes that he can't keep pining after ha Akihiko when Akihiko is clearly still uh, still hung up on uh, Ugetsu. Um, and all the while, they are preparing for a fairly um, important, fairly important competition for them. I believe if they had won it, they would have. Um, I can't remember exactly. They would have gotten something good for the band's progression in particular. Um, mm -hmm. But the real, the real turning point is um, Mafia's second song. Uh, Yoruga Akeru, which again is a wonderful song. Sense Millimental does good fucking work, and mm -hmm. Shogoyano is a great singer. Um, there's also a there's there's a couple more songs as well that I uh, let me just get the names. So I, again, I've bought all of all of the given songs. I should <laughs> say right now. Uh, there's Gibbon. G. Gibbon. Uh, Taxo. Uh, and Stagekara Kimini Sasagu. Again, I'm butchering pronunciation, I'm sure. As well as, uh, Yuruga Kiru. So again, shout out to Sensor Millimental for that fucking, uh, <laughs> for those fucking songs, which are stupendous. Um, but it's it's not even so much the um, the lyrics of the song because the lyrics are actually more aimed at Ugetsu because throughout the film um, Mafia had actually sparked up something of a friendship with Ugetsu in that they are both they are both prodigies and both know what the other is going through basically. Um, 
and basically Ugetsu had realized that um well a he'd very much well i think he, he, he i'm fairly sure he'd already realized that his relationship with akihiko was uh toxic as fuck but um he very much realized that no it needs to end now but that's also scary for him because they had been basically together i believe since high school yeah no in, that in one form that, or another i believe i believe they met like as first years or second years or something mm. i don't think they gave a specific time frame yeah and so you know it was as much as um as much as he did realize that um the relationship was was toxic and it was hurting both of them he was basically too scared to properly end it um and and that was the reason he basically kept kept the relationship going to an extent and you know he was he was scared but and so that's that was the point of the song was mafia basically telling ugetsu Look, just because this is ending doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Um, the sun will rise again, and it'll it'll be fine, basically. Um, but what it did for Akihiko was basically sparked his passion for music again. Because, um, as, as we said, after... After hearing Ugetsu play the violin for the first time, and Ugetsu, we should point out at that point, was a, I believe, nationally, if not internationally, renowned uh, violin player. And. I believe it was nationally. Regardless, I don't know if they specify, though. A he, very, he is still very well regarded and very well known. Yeah. A very well regarded um, violinist. Um, and it. It very much killed Akihiko's uh, love for music, and it was only hearing um, hearing Mafia's song that makes him realize that playing music doesn't have to be to just be the best. It's, I mean, I can't. I don't know how to word it, and I can't remember exactly what his wording was, but again, it basically sparked his passion for music, and he started playing the violin again, which he basically hadn't done since hearing Ugetsu play. Um, and the movie actually ends with him giving a performance with Haruki and I believe Mafia in the crowd. Um... But it also, um, he basically, you know, comes to realize that, well, over, over that, I believe it was over that summer, um, where he was basically living with Haruki, just comes to realize that he does love Haruki and wants to be in a, wants to be in a relationship with him. Um, and that is basically how the, uh, how the movie ends with Akiko confessing and Haruki uh, reciprocating. Um, as said, the movie could have been given a bit more time to uh, let that play out. It certainly wasn't bad, but I'm not sure, necessarily sure, if the um, if it was as good as. Uh, Mafia and Oenoyama's relationship, but at the end of the day, it's still a very good series and a very, very interesting romance series. Um, again, one that we discussed Bloom and You last week and how it wasn't solely about the romance; it was also about the the characters coming to terms with other things. Um, and, given and also the damn good music. I mean, yeah, Given, Given's music, as we've been saying again and again, is wonderful. Um, in fact, I also believe I've got... Let me just check 
the where is it there certainly i'm fairly sure i've listened to uh given's ost before uh and enjoyed it a lot um it's a again um i believe the let's have a look uh okay that's less helpful um let me just get mal up to see who did the ost so obviously it wasn't uh sentimental uh given group let's see hmm. uh michiru um a composer and arranger I've... from Makyogo prefecture japan who was also also I did the music I've for them also did the music for Ben. Ah. Also did the music for um, Joran from this season. Uh, did the oh, music wow. for Bookworm. Did the music for uh, Last Dungeon Boonies. Huh. That is quite an eclectic collection. Yeah. As well as, as, well as a few other things. Um, but again, you know, shout out to, to her for that um also shout out to the performances um i'm trying to remember who exactly said this i'm just gonna have to disable that hopefully i won't get any uh any fucking um discord notifications while i'm doing this but i'm just gonna have a look because i believe when we were talking about um, talking about the show as it was airing, uh, let's see if I can find what we were talking about. Uh, that's September. But basically, that the um, the animation for the um, for the songs, for the playing of the instruments, was was very good and very uh, very well animated. Um, and very accurately animated, uh, more specifically. That's it. I found the comment that I made about the uh, the people in the Crunchyroll comments complaining that Given was gay in the comments for episode seven. Episode 7. It took them that long to realise that Given was fucking gay. <laughs> and I just can't believe that. I really can't believe that somebody fucking... <laughs> took that long to realise that Given, of all things, is fucking gay. Um... Where is it? I think it was actually, um, Lord that, um that pointed that out though i can't remember it exactly uh <laughs> oh that's right <laughs> so something that happened during the um during the actual anime series was um when Ayama's group of friends um basically heard rumors from somebody who went to middle school with mafia that Muffy was gay. Uh, and uh, I believe my reaction was rumors. Why are there rumors when Muffy is clearly as gay as the day is long? Um, as well as the fact he and Haruki are so clearly gay, I'm surprised they aren't wearing uh, LGBTQ gear just to push it home. <laughs> uh. But yeah, so what else was I saying? Uh, so yeah, uh, animation of the instruments was well done. Apparently, the actual design of the instruments, um, for example, Mafia's guitar is, um, which I believe is a Gibson ES three thirty, um, is a is a real guitar and was very accurately designed. Um, so the the staff making it um hikaru yamaguchi the director uh yuji higa the producer and 
animation directors uh, Yasuho Tamura and Mina Osua uh, clearly knew what they were doing when they made this, um, which again is always is always fantastic. This has an eight point three five on Mal, by the way. That is impressive. Get, anything getting above an A on Mal is yeah always almost always a good sign. On so, the top on the top anime it's page, it's. It, the top anime page is 181st out of, you know, mm. thousands, tens of thousands. <laughs> mm -hmm. I should know. Yeah, I case... fucking counted them up for my dissertation, which was a dumb move. Damn. <laughs> Why? Why would you do that to yourself? Give me a second. Where's my, where's my fucking memory stick? I need to plug it in to do this. Um... Anyways, like, if something gets above an 8 on Mal, it's a, either a sign that it's really good, or that it is a sequel entry in a very hyped oh, franchise, like, uh, like Gintama, which has way too many fucking series. There it is. Dissertation. Uh, pictures. Where's the actual dissertation itself? There. Just to open this up very quickly. Just tell you, uh... Based on my count, um, which was based on Mal, actually, no, I'd still say tens of thousands. So in 2019, the year that this that this show aired, 622 anime. 622 anime. Fucking hell. Uh, the year before. And that includes a movie, right? Uh, I believe that. Movies and OVAs. Yes, yes, I believe it does. I can't remember my exact um, criteria. Um, but certainly movies, OVAs, and series, I believe I included. I believe I might have also included ONAs, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, 2018, 810. 2017, 845. Fucking hell. I have a giant fucking table, because I went through counting from 1961 how many anime were in each year. Because I was... Because I was dumb like that. Because uh, the topic of my dissertation was uh, history and folklore in Japanese media. So I decided for my uh, for my chapter three that I'd start talking about um, basically uh, the trend of the number of historical and folkloric anime throughout the years, uh, and it actually does stay re relatively consistent. <laughs> For anyone interested, uh, 2019, 87 of the 622 anime series were historical or folkloric by my count. And that was just me basically going through and seeing if it had, uh, if it mentioned anything historical or folkloric or had uh, <laughs> the historical or folklore tag on them on Mal. So, that, if they yeah, that's nearly uh, 15%. That is fourteen percent overall. Dang. And it's it's a similar percentage throughout the years, um, somewhere between uh, thirteen and eighteen percent ish. There are some there are some outliers that go a little bit higher. Uh, the year two thousand had a percentage of twenty one point one, so four forty five out of two hundred thirteen. But uh, for the most part, it was relatively consistent. Um, but again, that's that's beside the point. Uh, maybe one day I'll do do an anime that's basically me regurgitating my dissertation. Not an anime, a podcast. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. But that is that is not today. Um, I mean, given because it is such a short series, it is basically a 13, 13 episode anime. Um, if you include Basically. the movie, because the movie is 59 minutes, which is about the runtime of two episodes. Um, a little bit extra, but yeah. A little bit extra, but for the most part. Um, so we are expecting this to go shorter. Um, I'd say we could probably waffle for another sort of 10, 20 minutes on this. Yeah, probably if we want to stretch it. Um, we can try at least. But I mean, again, I just, I just want to talk about just how much I enjoyed the series. It really was just so. 
I mean, the 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 relationship or the romance between Matthew and Wenayama um, is one of my favorite types, um, because it's one of those what the two dork. Well, it's one of those where there's so little doubt that the two of them like each other, and it's just about them realizing that. Yeah, because they're dorks. Yeah, because they are complete dumbasses. don't dumbasses. understand it. I mean, again, <laughs> I I said this at the start of the stream, and I'll say it again, and I said it in my write-up about Given um, for my uh, 2019 of anime. Um, I was worried about the show watching the PVs, and I thought that the, that the relationship between Mafu and Weniyama would be turn out turn out to be toxic. Um, while it's not impossible to pull that off, as, um, well, it's not impossible. Um, I mean, look at the relationship between, um, you and, uh, Toko in Bloom. That's, for, for a decent portion of that series, that relationship is not exactly healthy. Um. Oh, yeah, no. But, um, it, it's hard to pull off a toxic relationship well. But by the end of the episode, by the end of episode one, I knew I'd read the situation completely wrong. That these idiots that I thought were shady and bad influences were in fact lovable dumbasses, <laughs> and as far from shady as you could get. I mean, there's also there's also scenes. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember exactly oh, what happened. Met, in it. No. Remember how we alluded to that one scene? In the oh, that that's right. About? Yeah, there. So, basically, I believe it's it's either a band meeting or a practice session um, that Akihiko doesn't attend, and so Haruki calls Akihiko. To see where he is. Unfortunately, uh, Akihiko picks up the phone while he's getting a BJ, and we do yeah. not mean a bat job, folks. We do not mean a bat job. <laughs> and again I was shocked that um, it probably explains why this pit, this particular bit was a movie because they can probably get away with putting that in a movie they might not be able to get away with putting that on TV uh, nah no, 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 no. you need like some really mature uh, rating stuff to get away with that on TV because that like, the, the fucking fully nude from behind because the fucking sounds were straight out of a porno Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, it's not like, you know, we were just seeing, like, Akiko's head and shoulders. No, we saw Akiko sitting fully naked and this girl's head going backwards and forwards. I'm fairly sure. Yeah, we, it, it is as explicit as it can get without showing genitals. Yeah, certainly the girl's head was between Akiko's legs. And, oh boy. Uh, not a lot of room for ambiguity there. Uh... And speaking as a queer person myself, ho oh boy, ho oh boy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, that was a scene that happened, and I was rather surprised about. Um, uh, what else is there? Um, I mean, just getting, just seeing, um, Matthew and Wenyama hanging out together away from the band and just basically Wenayama rebuilding Mafu's I don't want to say confidence because it wasn't it wasn't his confidence that he lost. Just rebuilding Mafu in general. So he said, Mafu basically at the start of the series was drifting through life. Not not attached to anyone. He very specifically, I believe uh, gone to a different high school from his former friends and hadn't talked to them since um, Yuki had died. Mm -hmm. um, and was, again, was just drifting through life, not really getting attached to anything other than the guitar that Yuki had left him. Um, and Uenoyama just, just not even... I, not even really doing it on purpose, just just started hanging around with him, gave him another group of friends, because uh, Mafia started hanging around with Uenoyama's friends, um, and getting on with them. Um, 
And again, just the the reassurance that the Matthew was human, that he is capable of feeling emotion, and he is capable of expressing that emotion so that other people can understand it, more importantly. Um, and it's it's... It's a fairly typical plot in music shows. I mean, we've just... The finale for Snow White Notes came out today, which was all about um, Setsu trying to figure out his sound and how to basically um, convey to the audience listening to him what his feelings are and what his sound is. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not groundbreaking in that sense, but again, it's just so so nicely done by Ueno Yama, just um, just reassuring Mafiu and making sure that he knows that he is, again, he's capable of feeling emotions, and he's capable of conveying those emotions properly. And obviously, he very much is to a, to a significant degree based on his fucking, <laughs> based on his two fucking songs that he writes that are just, that get across exactly what he wants them to do. Um, there's also the fact that um, throughout it, he does, he doesn't sort of, um, the friendship he has with um, his old friends, it doesn't sort of come back in its full form. But uh, certainly he gets to know um, or he gets to talk a lot more with um, Hiragi. Um, and you do get hints about what their relationship used to be because throughout the show, Mafia is very much a very much a passive person in a lot of conversations, but when he's talking with Hiragi, he he's actually a lot snarkier which is quite nice and you get the get the sense that that is that is what he was like before uh yuki passed away mm. uh and again it's it's just so nice getting to see some of this stuff and i really do the series is still one of my favorites um I don't think it quite Honestly, breaks into my top ten of all time, but I don't think it's. I think it's probably top twenty easily. Out of all the romance series I've watched, both queer and straight, this is quite probably in my top five. Hmm. Like the other only ones I can certainly say are in my top five are Bloom into You and Fruits Basket. Yeah. And we will discuss Fruits Basket in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we will discuss that at length, uh, I'm sure. But um, hey. <laughs> but in terms, I mean, there there is a reason we picked uh, this and Bloom to be the two series we discussed in Pride Month. It's because we both love them. They're both, They're both some of our favorite shows. Series. Yeah. Um. Honestly, like, it's going to be difficult figuring out what to do for Pride Month for next year for topics, but... Yeah. The, but Given and Bloom into you were just... Well, they were a given. <laughs> Pardon the pun, but yeah, it, it's true. We, we kind of, like, we looked at all the um, uh, LGBTQ plus themed series, and... Um, Let's be real, we, we didn't look at any series. We just said, oh, we, sh we should do some... Uh... We should do some uh, LGBTQ plus stuff for uh, for Pride Month. Okay, um, what shows should we cover? Given and Bloom. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that was pretty much instantaneous. Yeah. Us deciding on the, those two shows. Yeah, it is. It like, is going to be. It was not a hard decision. It is going to be slightly more difficult uh, next year. I'm sure we'll figure something out. Um, what's that? Uh, wh and there's plenty of time to watch stuff we haven't watched anyways. In the yeah. Interim. What's that series that that Coney really loves? Um, that uh, Yuri series. You're gonna have to be more specific. Uh, I believe it's a movie. Oh, Kazesan. Kazesan. We might discuss that next next year. That one's a good one. That one's a good. One. Yeah. 
We'll have to we'll have to find a a, a gay one to. Uh... I mean, it could be something uh, themes around another different uh, LGBT ad identity. Yeah. Again, this also, is the, this is this um, is stuff we'll we'll figure out at some point. Um, I was also gonna say like, good BL anime are few and far between. Yeah, that's 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 the unfortunate nature of it. Um, I believe good Yuri series also I believe, pretty rare, but uh, we I, I believe we said this last recently. week. Yeah, I believe we said this last week, but uh, Yuri is still more acceptable than uh boys love all gay romance mm -hmm. um it's unfortunate that the double that double standard exists but at the same time i am glad that representation for both is increasing however slowly it may be mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just Still, um, I'm, I'm just looking through the something uh, will come out in the interim between now and then. So who knows? We might yeah. cover something that has yet to come out. Tokyo Babylon Regardless, apparently is shown an eye, which I did not expect. Didn't that get postponed indefinitely? Yes, it did because uh, the the staff uh, were uh, plagiarizing something, I believe. Good old plagiarism strikes again. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe the some of the staff were also on. What was it? Uh, oh, that's right, Joran, <laughs> which really doesn't speak to Joran's uh, quality. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think I found something for twenty twenty two. Anyway, uh, ho oh, hopefully, Studio Dean show called uh, Sasaki To Miano. It looks like it could be decent, but it's not coming out till 2022, so. Unfortunate. Yeah, that is unfortunate. But yeah, um, finding a good sh uh, good BL show is going to be a fun time. Maybe we should look on the western side of the world. Is there a good... Good gay show there? Well, we can discuss this off stream. Again, but, yeah, we'll um, we'll discuss this off stream. Um, and I think we are sort of reaching for time now. Figuring out. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I want to mention. Um, that's right. Apparently, the um, the backgrounds and the settings um, are all based on real places, or a lot of them that's are based good. on real places. Um, setting around uh, Machida in Western Tokyo. Um, Matthew has a pet Pomeranian, uh, called Kedama, which means furball. That is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fucking, um, what was it? Um, Haruki's friend, uh, what's his name? Where is it? Oh god, he's not on the supporting characters list. Why is he not on the supporting characters list? <laughs> Fucking Ueno Yama's friends are on there, and he, and this guy isn't when he plays a much bigger role. I believe his name is Take. Um, Jesus, he's not on the fucking characters list on TV tropes either. I think it's Take. Uh, who is, again, who is Haruki's friend. Um... Seems like a really cool dude. Um, oh, there's another... <laughs> there's another hilarious moment after the photo shoot where uh, Matthew and... Well, I think it's just Matthew is doing... Actually, they're doing homework and they mention um, modern literature homework. Um... And one of them mentions how uh, the book they're reading isn't exactly modern, as the author was born um, in, I believe, the 20th century or something like that. Um, I, I'm pretty sure if they were born post-1900, they're considered modern. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Haruki, Akiko, and Take just have this uh, reaction, because obviously they were also born in the 20th century. <laughs> 
Where I was oh, like, oh yeah. Before you and Oyama are both fucking fucking zoomers. Yeah. Let me see if there's a wiki for them. To see if we can get more of a yes, there is. See if we can get a get a date for date for them. Well, he's sixteen, and let's assume that the uh, that the series aired um, or the series is set in the uh, year that it aired, which is twenty nineteen. So yeah, Mafia born in two thousand and three. Um, as is Ueno Yama. Oh. Ueno Yama turns seventeen mid series, so he was probably two thousand two. Um. And then we've you've got uh fucking fucking Haruki who's twenty two, and I believe Taki is the same age. And Akihiko, who's 20. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they They're will... They're all filthy first. Yeah. Um... Also, something we haven't mentioned is... Um... Oh, that's why I didn't realize it. Uh, Take's full name is Koji Yatake. Huh. That's why I didn't fucking realize it. Um, but yeah, we didn't mention uh, Wenoyama's older sister. Uh, who actually had been in a relationship uh, with Akihiko and got dumped, I believe, either prior to the series or somewhere near the start of it. Hmm. Certainly, they certainly she got dumped, uh, which she did not take well. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh yeah. Speaking of female characters, isn't there one in the series, one of the class, one of uh, Ritsuka's and uh, Mafuyu's classmates who has a crush on Mafuyu? Yes. Uh, what's which is unfortunate for her because there is yeah. no chance of that getting requited. Uh, let me see. Where is it? Uh, just when I saw it, uh, Kasai. Um, and th th that's that's where a little bit of drama that I mentioned while I think you were away um, happened because um, it was her who actually told um, Oenoyama about uh, Yuki's suicide, uh, hoping that it would, you know. Make what Wenoyama distance himself from Mafia. Um, Some shitty fucking shit. To be fair, she does realize that no, that's that's not on, and does apologize for it. Yeah. That like it's. Look, I did a dick move, and I recognize it was a dick move. Yeah. So. Is there anything else? No, I don't think so. Um, other than other than that, the manga is still ongoing, um, and has a new volume coming out uh, this December. Um, nice. It's actually got a bunch of other stuff because uh, it got a um, got an audio drama in twenty sixteen. Where is that? Uh... Well, yeah, it's yeah. First, first released in twenty sixteen, um, and the most recent one came out in twenty twenty. Uh, it's also very recently, in fact, May this year, has got a six episode live action uh, adaptation. Uh, oh, will release, that's interesting. Will release in Jul on July seventeenth this year on. Uh, Fuji TV streaming service. Um, I also, don't have that, but that's nice. I mean, yeah, we we won't be able to watch it uh, officially. Um, there's also <laughs> officially officially yes. Um, it's also a 
or going to be a stage play adaptation, which will be happening, uh, unfortunately got delayed because of COVID and will happen in November 2021, hopefully. So it's a very, very popular series. Um, based on some things that I'm seeing on uh, the TV Tropes page, I believe, considering uh, I'm fairly sure the manga has concluded um, Akihiko and Haruki's story, I believe the next one that's going to get some focus is... Um, is uh, Mafia's friend Hiragi's relationship. Oh, with whom? Uh, another childhood friend of uh, Yuki and Mafia called uh, Shizusumi Yagi. I don't think we've met them in the anime. No, I do, n neither do I. They only have a, um, they only have an actor for the Actually, no, they were in the anime. They were in the anime. Um, I believe he was the one that uh, hung around with Hiragi all, a lot. Um, oh, okay. They just weren't really a no. They they, they they were they were not they were very much not the uh, spotlight character. They were very much the sort of fourth member background. of that. Yeah, background fourth member. Um, But as I said, I believe that is um, that's what it's going to be based on what I'm reading at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I mean, couldn't happen to a better series, really. <laughs> the fact yeah. the, the fact that it's getting a live action adaptation is big. Um, and certainly speaks to Given's popularity in Japan. Let's see if there's does it say anything about that. Uh, no, I don't think so. But it's um, it is definitely also it's also getting uh, an English release. So um, currently five volumes are out, with the sixth to come in September this year, I believe. Oh, I need to find out where I can buy that. Uh, it is published by it... published by Viz under their Sublime imprint. It's been mm. releasing since February twenty twenty, so it's been releasing at a fairly decent pace. That's good. Yeah, I just realized with a lot of music based show series, I do think I prefer the um, stuff that actually plays music. No, that's absolutely fair, and I mean that's the thing. That's that is the reason why I. Um, when I was when I was reading the performance of Fuyu no Hanashi played the song as well because um, it because it, it did add or does add to the atmosphere of it. Um, so just looking at just looking at the reception part of it, I mean it's. Um, the fil for the film in the opening weekend, it was ranked first um, in a particular uh, lot of ticket or particular tracking of ticket sales, um, and remained in first for five weeks. Um, in the overall box office, it ranked ninth in its opening weekend. Despite opening in only 30 theatres, roughly one-tenth the number of theatres of its closest competitors. Sold 100,000 tickets um, in, I believe that was a month. No, less than a month. 22nd, 22nd of August to 14th of September is just under a Three month. weeks. Three weeks. So 100,000 tickets in three weeks during a pandemic. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. It's not Demon Slayer impressive, but nothing is Demon Slayer impressive. Really. Very, very little is Demon Slayer impressive. We'll have to see how Jujutsu Kaisen does with its movie, but... 
like not much is going to be able to reach that but the fact that given was able to do that is is pretty fucking good um yeah honestly i think that's that's all we can say a... is please give the series a watch it is so worth it as i said it's only about it 13 episodes in terms of uh in terms of timings timing wise with the with the movie um, and it's so fucking worth it. It is. I mean, we've we've almost certainly also um, missed some stuff from the series that we that we enjoyed because, really? as we said, I certainly I haven't watched the episodes fully since um, it aired. Um, mm. I might have watched. As much as I like rewatching old shows, it's like hard to find the time to do so mm. that is that is sort of the issue with um the uh with the seasonal anime lifestyle is uh we're so busy watching the shows currently coming out that it doesn't really allow us to watch anything prior to that or watch anything that came mm -hmm. out prior to that uh yeah you have to set aside time for that and that's difficult and i'm very bad at that <laughs> mm, same I mean, I, I can barely even watch fucking Netflix shows because of the whole binging thing. God. But yeah, I think... I probably watched a couple of episodes when I was doing my write-up, but that was, you know, December 2019, January 2020. Um, so again, a while ago. Um, so we probably have forgotten some stuff, but honestly... I can't, th I can't think of something that I didn't like from the si well, the only thing that I didn't especially like was the um, was the was Akihiko's attempted rape, but eh. mm. yeah, that scene was uh, not fun it's, to watch. Yeah, eh. was it entirely necessary? Probably not, but. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm willing to allow one misstep from a show, especially a show as good as this. Mm -hmm. I mean, just in terms of how it handles grief, it is a stupendous show. Because mm -hmm. again, because that is that is that is the big part of of Mafia's storyline is him getting past his getting past his guilt and getting past his grief. Um, almost certainly repeating myself at this point but it bears mentioning um and again just getting to see especially after just after he sung sung fu nahanashi and as the as the song is coming to an end he glances at uh ueno yama who meets his eyes then turns back out to the um the crowd with a giant smile on his face and it is at that point that that Mafiu Mafiu the dam that Mafiu had been basically trying to batter his way past finally broke. Uh yeah. Honestly all I can say is I love the series and please give it a watch. We've managed to make it to an hour and a half, which I think is impressive. Mm -hmm. I know we got distracted at points and uh, <laughs> started talking about other stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's. I think that's all we've got for you, unless there's unless there's a closing statement you want to give, Jack. No, beyond uh, watch given, it's a very good series and uh, it deserves more attention and, res and uh, respect. Watch Given, listen to the music. Buy the music. It's so good. Honestly, you will not music regret it. Fantastic. I love the music. As I said, I've got... I've got... The only song that I don't have from the actual um, anime series is the uh, Jam Session. Uh, and I probably am going to end up buying that at some point. <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't, sure. And I've got all of the uh, all of the songs from the movie, I believe, that are out. Um, the other thing I want to mention 
um, the the band did actually, or Sent Sentimental along with uh, Shogo Yano, did actually do a live live like uh, concert um, in October 2010, I believe. Um, and I'm also gonna post that link in the chat because it is. Um, Shogo Yano doesn't do doesn't sing the whole song. It's singing uh, Yoru Yoruga Akaru, but uh, certainly he and the main singer of Center Millimental work together really well to sing the song. So again, give that a watch. It's really good. Um, and yeah, that's it. Um, contrary to what we said on Thursday, we will not be having D and D because it's Father's Day and Jack apparently cares about his dad. Uh, yeah, I I kind of care about my dad. Who'd have thought? Boo. D and D <laughs> is more important. Damn it. <laughs> no. Uh, well, and as it turns out, actually, it is UK Father's Day tomorrow as well. Do you care about your dad, Mel? Uh, my actual dad uh is dead, and I'm not that close with my stepdad, so no. <laughs> my bad. It's fine. <laughs> it's just, there's a reason I forgot. <laughs> well, on that happy uh, note... On that happy note, we will... We'll, <laughs> so in terms of future streams, Tuesday, probably more Mass Effect. Certainly, I hope so. Um, should be Fuzzy playing that time, and he gets his... Will hopefully get his first experience of the Mako, which is going to be fucking hilarious. The maiden voyage of Fuzzy driving the Mako. Uh... As I said, I'm just glad I avoided the fucking lava on uh, Theorem. <laughs> it was close at times. <laughs> um, no stream Thursday, um, but next Saturday will be um, our final Pride Month uh, podcast on the topic of queer baiting versus queer coding. So that's going to be a fun one. I'm sure talking talking uh, during that um, will come up with uh, a gay show we can cover next year. At some point. I mean, there's plenty of options to choose from, especially with all the yeah. stuff that's come out recently. Yeah. Uh, and then, not obviously not tomorrow, but the Sunday after. Fingers crossed we will restart D&D. &D. Fingers crossed, well, Jack. <laughs> Almost a month off from D and D now, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and I just want to. Uh... Oh, it's not in the schedule. Um, on the, I believe it is the uh, the first of July will be first our of July. will be our so spring anime um, finale stream. Yep. And. Oh boy, do I want to talk about some stuff. Especially Thunderbolt fu fucking fantasy. <laughs> All I will say is that goddamn Vape Gandalf got me again. Three seasons in a fucking row, that bastard got me. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was fucking doing the Macaulay Culkin uh, scream pose the entire last portion of today's episode. God fucking damn it. I cannot, still cannot believe that shit. But I will go into, obviously, more details uh, on the first. Um, and then on July that... July is also going to be a fun time. On that Saturday, but, uh, yeah. Um, uh, on the Saturday after that, we're going to be talking about America in international media. Because, uh, hey, it's going to be the day before 4th of July. So why the fuck not? I do want to point out that the first time I was in America for 4th of July, uh, I thought a gang war was going on outside my window. Because <laughs> I completely forgot that it was 4th of July. Just started hearing banging and was like, uh, uh, what's happening out there? Oh no. Looked out the window, saw the fireworks and went, oh yeah, it's 4th of July. Yeah, it's just those healthy colonials having a good time, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just, I was in a pretty, um, pretty sh shady area of LA at the time. In fact, um, I believe n less than a year afterwards, there was actually a mass shooting in a school, 
uh, around the corner from where I was staying. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was, as I said, I was, I did not know what was happening, okay? I just didn't know. I knew the next year, um, but the next year was also the de- year I, um, I believe the fourth was on the, f- like, um, preview night of, of Anime Expo, so I came back slightly earlier than I usually did and uh, had a chat with my Airbnb host. But obviously, because fireworks were going off, it wasn't much of a conversation because we could barely hear each other. <laughs> And what happened the third year? Uh, I'll remember it later. Anyway, uh, that is that is all we have for you today. As always, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to us gush about Given and then and also go on a lot go of on tangents. Random tangents. Uh, <laughs> My brain just works in weird ways sometimes, especially when I'm tired. <laughs> I mean, I have ADHD brain, so... I probably do as well. I should probably get that checked out, honestly. Probably. But anyways, thank you all for joining us. Um, and uh, we'll as, see you next well, time. As always, um, give us a follow on Twitch and Twitter. Give us a subscribe on YouTube where you'll find all of the archives... Um, from our past streams um and yeah thank you for thank you for watching and thank you for listening and have a good night later goodbye